Welcome to St. Michael. We offer a special welcome to all visitors who are with us this evening and to those viewing the live stream. Printed worship aids are available at the entrances. Today we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. St. Nicholas in Newmarket is hosting this year and devotions will begin at 3 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. Please see the bulletin for more information. On Monday evening, we welcome Father Steve McMichael, who will give a presentation about Mary Magdalene as the model of resurrection faith. Father Steve is a Franciscan friar living at the Franciscan Retreat Center in Prior Lake and teaches theology at the University of St. Thomas. The presentation will begin at 6.30 p.m. in Archangels Hall. The Franciscan Retreat Center in Prior Lake invites you to attend a showing of a film called The Letter. This powerful movie features Pope Francis on the impact of climate change and what we can do to help. The film will be shown this Thursday at 6.30 p.m. at the Retreat Center. This would be a great way to prepare for Earth Day on April 22nd. Please see the bulletin for more information or contact Lorne, our pastoral care minister. And now, someone will speak to us about April Fest on April 27th. Good evening, my name is Anna Story, and my husband and I have been members here for the past two years. I am the new volunteer coordinator for April Fest. It's coming up on Saturday, April 27th from 11 to 7. We have a lot of fun planned. There'll be music, food, drinks, games for the kids, games for the adults. Um, but in order to make it a success, we need all of you. We need you to sign up for a two to three hour shift. We can find, we have a lot of options, so we can find whatever works for your skill set. Um, but to put the event on, we need a lot of volunteers. So after mass, we'll have a group of us back at the back of the church for signups. Please come and meet with us and we will find an option for you. And then also pick up your 50-50 raffle tickets on the way out of church. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you at April Fest. Let us rise and sing number 443 in the black book, join in the dance. Number 443 in the black book.
the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. With grace and peace of the risen Christ be with you always. Amen. My friends, we gather filled with Easter joy as we have been praying and doing penance for 40 days. Now we have 50 days to celebrate with joy and look forward to that day when one day we will reign with Jesus too. As we begin our prayer, we ask the Lord, Lord's blessing once again on our Easter waters that it will remind us of those promises we made in baptism. Let us pray. Lord our God, in your mercy, be present to your people's prayers. And for us to recall the wondrous work of our creation, still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. You made the water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received, and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. In our prayer, let us lift up in prayer Joseph Reardon, whose funeral services will be coming up soon. We are planning his funeral this afternoon. He had been married just shy of 72 years when he went home to be with Jesus. Tomorrow morning at the 8.30 Mass, we're going to pray with Larry and Jan von Boxtel, who will be celebrating their 68th wedding anniversary. Give you something to shoot for. Let us pray. O God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, 
by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, For those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world 
is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst, and he said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, we pick up pretty much right where we left off last Sunday in John's Gospel. Today, we hear more in stories about disciples being invited to believe, to have faith in the risen Jesus. Remember last week, we started with Mary Magdalene, the first witness to bring that news that something had happened to Jesus. She wasn't quite there yet, but she had that encounter in the tomb. And she was coming to faith. And Peter saw the empty tomb, and he saw the wrappings, the bandages all neatly stacked up, and something was going on in him. Then we're told the other disciple, the one who Jesus loved, saw and believed. 
That's where we stopped last week. Now, actually, we skip a little part between. Beautiful story about Mary Magdalene being back in the garden at the tomb and encountering the risen Jesus. And do you know how she recognizes him? At first, she thinks he's the gardener. I always love that line. Could you take care of those weeds? And by the way, do you know where Jesus is? And he recognizes her when he calls her, or she she recognizes him when he calls her by name. So powerful. He just says, Mary. She says, Rabboni. And she comes to faith. And then she becomes the true first evangelist, running out to tell the good news. I've seen the Lord. Now we're right after that. The disciples are all gathered and invited to faith. Well, all but one. We'll get to that. Tom, or Jesus appears to them despite the locked doors. And when they saw him, we're told they believe, and he sent them to proclaim the good news. Now, of course, the following week, we all know the story. Thomas, who had been out for getting the pizza the week before, didn't find Jesus. He says, he had said he would only believe if he touched his hands and his eyes. And oh, so much has been written about the doubts of Thomas, who finally comes to his faith when he encounters the risen Lord and makes that, sign, or makes that bold proclamation, no one's made before, my Lord and my God. And I've explained a lot, as my, my patron saint, of course, that too many people focus too much in too many homilies on Thomas's doubts. And I think what's far more important, remember, the rest have their doubts too, The rest deserted Jesus on the way to the cross. That's not that far long ago. But they all came to believe. What's most important is what happens just before that and just after that. What happens just before Thomas's profession of faith. We're told that Jesus, after they had first seen him, what does he do? Love that line. He breathes the Holy Spirit on them. He doesn't just give them the gift of the Holy Spirit. He breathes it on them. And it is a spirit, I suggest, to help them to move beyond their doubts and their fears and their wonderings so they could open those locked doors and tell the whole world about the risen Lord, whatever the cost. And you know, we're hearing these beautiful stories about just that in the Acts of the Apostles at Daily Mass. They go out, they get thrown in jail, then the Spirit opens up the doors to the jails. They go out and they, they, they talk some more and the, the religious authorities get a little concerned how these guys are getting out. And we'll, we'll cover that another day. But the breathing forth of the Holy Spirit, such a key moment. And then what af- comes after that, I said, after Thomas comes to faith, is that proclamation where he says, my Lord, my God, Despite all the ways that Jesus had tried to invite his disciples to understand who he was, no one got it before this. No one really understood that he was indeed their beloved friend and Lord, but also God among them. And Thomas makes that beautiful proclamation of faith. Now, in just a few weeks, some of you sitting here, about a hundred of our young people, I will journey to St. Paul Cathedral for confirmation to have that Holy Spirit breathed on them. I've just started reading their uh, Why I Want to Be Confirmed letters. I I give this hint every year, but they don't always get it. So I say, make sure, especially if it's more than one page, that it's more than one paragraph. You know, it's a stream of consciousness writing they do sometimes. Not making fun, just the way it is. My eyes get a little blurry sometimes trying to read those letters. I love reading those letters. But they're supposed to tell me why they want to be confirmed. And I find a lot of, I want to complete my Catholic initiation, be fully a member of the church. Some will honestly say, I want to make my parents happy. It's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. They do sometimes want that, parents. But sometimes I wonder if I will ever read I want to move beyond my doubts. I want to trust despite all the troubling things that happened in our troubled world that God is in control 
And God loves everyone beyond all measure, even in the midst of those difficulties. Or I want to believe with all my heart, my soul, my mind, and my strength. I know I can't touch his hands and his side, but I want to have the faith that disciples had that will take me, let me be unafraid, and go out and talk about the risen Savior, regardless of the consequences. I want the Archbishop to breathe on me that Holy Spirit that helped all 11 apostles move beyond their doubts and fears. Now, I get, I get a little of that in some of those letters. But what about the rest of us this Easter, my friends? How might we still be entertaining doubts when God's plans aren't our plans or when evil tra- seems to triumph in the midst of human sinfulness, or we just don't feel that power of faith the way we once did. As we rejoice with the risen Lord, <clears throat> how do we need to stir into flame the faith that carried us <coughs> where it is once and will always carry us since the day the spirit of the risen Christ was breathed upon us? I believe in one God. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds in the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's abundant love for us, we name our needs this day. for the church, that as we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday, we may be transformed through our encounters with the living Christ and be instruments of healing and forgiveness in our broken world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace among nations, particularly in the Holy Land, for an end to the violence, the release of hostages and unjustly imprisoned people, and the safe delivery of humanitarian aid, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering, that God will heal the sick, comfort the grieving, guide refugees to safety, and open resources to those who lack food and medicine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are confused or doubting their faith, and for those who have not yet found faith in God, that they may experience the risen Lord and discover the truth through his love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are baptized and initiated into the church at the Easter Vigil, for our youth preparing for confirmation, and for our children preparing for First Holy Communion, may they continue to grow in their faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing, that the Spirit will renew the gift of life in all who are sick, discouraged or struggling with addictions, we praise to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, including those who have recently died, and for Albina Feldman Heller, for whom this Mass is offered. 
May they all live forever with Christ in the glory of the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions we hold in the quiet of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we thank you for always listening to us as we cry out to you. Grant what you truly need this day. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us sing, though not seeing you, you'll find it in the worship aid. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to lodge you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Oh, 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and, all, and with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. My, look, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit, let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace to you.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is number 822 in the Gather Hymnal, I Am the Bread of Life. Number 822.
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. A lot going on this Easter season. Keep praying for those first communicants, those to be confirmed soon. Exciting time in their lives. Uh, tomorrow we'll be celebrating Divine Mercy Sunday. We've started that celebration already. We have four area churches that alternate hosting Divine Mercy devotions. So this year it will be at St. Nicholas in Newmarket, 3 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. See all the details in the bulletin about that. Uh, we have a wonderful gift right in our backyard with having the Franciscans so nearby. And actually, as I think about it, I don't know that we've ever had Father Steve McMichael out. He's been teaching at St. Thomas all these years, out to teach. And a uh, uh, wonderful area, his area of expertise uh, on Mary Magdalene and writings about that. So he's going to be uh, speaking Monday night. So I hope you come, invite a friend to come along with, for that. April Fest is just a few weeks away, so a good book part of the team is back there. Uh, we really want to have a great celebration this year. We promise we're going to up the ante on the kids' games, so make it fun for family members of all ages. But as I said, we need more volunteers. Great way to give a couple hours. We have a, a newly married couple who last year decided they it's a great way to meet more people, so they volunteer for April Fest, and they told me then they met all kinds of people volunteering I forget, they're selling raffle tickets or what they're doing. Maybe it was beer, I don't know which it is. It's, it's all good. So lots of ways to get involved. Check it out. They'd love to tell you more about it on the way out. Make sure you get your raffle tickets. Finally, two, two questions I want to answer. Uh, first of all, uh, just to make you smile, people often ask me, am I ever distracted by children in church? And I'll tell you, it's far more distracting when she's giving me a pitch in D and there's something beeping back there in the key of B-flat. I just got to admit, it's, I, could, I couldn't decide which one I was going to follow. Now, seriously, I get the question a lot, seems a lot lately, how long are you going to be at St. Mike's? Now, I always serve at the will of the Archbishop, I'll admit that, but that being said, at my age, I don't think he's too likely to be moving me anytime soon. My current assignment lasts until 2027, at which point I'll be almost 71 years old. And I have no intention of going anywhere before then. And we'll take it year by year. As long as my health is good, I'm just, I'm just happy to stay here with you. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. <laughs> Thank you. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let us sing number 452 in the Gather Hymnal. Sing to the Mountains. Number 452. Peace. 